Hey guys, Big Red here. So I had planned this video to be a one week video, but it ended up being way longer than I thought it was gonna be. So we're gonna split it into two. So here's part one of two. Thanks guys. Welcome back again to another episode of Big Red's Isopod. Uh, this week I'm super excited because uh, we have a very large amount of bins to swap over and I just can't wait to get into it. So let's go take a look guys. As you guys can see here, I have quite a few isopods I'd like to transfer over this week. We got five of the smaller containers, and we got six of the larger containers, and this seventh one, which we're just gonna be transferring over today. I think this bin is just a little bit too small for the guys that I'm housing in there. They're uh, actually uh, Priscilla Prunatus, the powder orange in there, and we're gonna be transferring them into one of these guys here today. All right, so I got all these bins already prepped up. I am gonna show you how to do one of them, just as an example. I've shown you in previous videos, but we'll go ahead and we'll do one more of these just for you guys to see. So as you guys can see here, I've got a bin without any holes in it yet. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking this drill with a bit in it, just a small Now I've just gone ahead and done five holes here as you can see. You could probably do six, but I think five will be enough for the species that we're gonna be putting in here. This will be either for the Florida Fast or the Dwarf Whites, so they'll do just fine with five. Again. And I try to go in fairly straight line, as you can see there, so that way that when I put the tape on here, which you'll see in a little bit, it's not going to, um, it's not going to be hard for me to keep it in uh, a nice, neat strip. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little knife I've got here, and we're just going to gently scrape across here, clear off all the extra, extra plastic here. Just gonna go along carefully and just remove any extra plastic that's hanging off here. That way, the tape has a nice clean flat surface to attach to. As you can see there, nice clean flat surface. On the outside here, we're just gonna quickly go over it just like that. And we can clean the mess up afterwards. So then what we're gonna do, so we're gonna take some of this breathable medical tape here. I'm just gonna peel it off. I'm gonna measure it so it's about the same length as the holes. Cut her off. And then we're just gonna stick it on here. See this is where it's nice to have the nice straight lines. That way, as you can see, it'll line up nice and neat here. And you're going to want to make sure there's no gaps, nice and tight on there so that the isopods don't escape. We're going to do one more for the other side. That should be good. Just take it. Cut it. Oh. There, we go. there we go. And again, we're just gonna adhere it to the inside here. You always wanna make sure that the sticky side is on the opposite side of the isopods. So that way, the isopods don't get stuck to the tape here on the inside. And on the outside, any bugs that try to get in are gonna get stuck to it, and then they won't be able to get in. They'll just get stuck there and they'll die. All right. So that's how I do the bottoms. I'm gonna be showing you one of the lids here. I've already got holes cut in the lids. Uh, the rest over in the background over here are all complete. I've got tape on all of these, but I'm gonna show you how I tape up the lids. Just as an example, I've done all the other ones, just this one left. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna grab some of the tape here, I'm gonna extend it out, kind of roughly measure it so it's about the width of the hole. We're gonna be cutting three pieces per hole here. So when I start, I like to start with the center one because it's the easiest place to start. 
Make sure it's nice and tight as you stretch it across. Grab another one, measure it out. Stick one on the top, very carefully. Make sure that it reaches all the way across. Make sure it's nice and tight so that the isopods aren't gonna get out. One more. And we're gonna do the same thing over here in the center hole. If you're using a smaller container, I would only suggest having one uh, air hole on the top, like most of my other ones are. Over here, as you can see, I've only got one hole in the center. Again, sticky side on the top, non-sticky side on the inside of the lid. But again, we're just gonna stretch one piece across the center here. Oop. I want it to be nice and even. Again, it'll never be perfect, but you want to try to do your best. Make sure it's nice and stretched all the way across, nice and flat, so there's no gaps. Now, I do try to make it as kind of small as possible because I have so many isopods that I kind of need to save as much material. You could do four across if you really wanted to, to make sure it's extra safe, but again, I try to save as much material as possible, so I'm only going with three. Last piece of tape here, stretch it across, stick it on, and then we're all good. And as you can see, looks nice and neat. Sticky side on the outside, catch any bugs that are gonna try to get it, your isopods. And then on the inside, it's just, just a rough tape. So that way that your isopods aren't gonna get stuck on there. And again, just because uh, the holes on the one side are for your dry side, just like the lid, there's a dry side. And then the side without the holes is for the wet side where we're gonna put our sphagnum moss today. All right, so first we're gonna be starting out with my Florida Fast. Now I do have quite a few of these containers, but I've started out with two that I think um, are gonna be relatively full and ready to be transferred over. As you can see here, there's quite a few isopods. As you can see, there is a lot of isopods in there, so that's why we're gonna be transferring over this container today. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take this bin here, and you see how deep the soil is on this side, so we want it to be about half as deep here. So I'm gonna take my trowel in here. I'm gonna take some soil out of here, just like we did with the other videos. So we're only gonna fill up a small amount. because half the soil from this container is gonna be in here, and then we're gonna fill up the rest of this container with some new soil. So you don't want it to be too deep. You want it to just be deep enough that there's a base layer of new soil in here, and then we'll fill up the top with new soil, or soil from the other container. So I'm just gonna take this kitchen spoon. What we're gonna do, we're gonna first, we're gonna take the log out of here. Now you can just see them running around like crazy in here. Now there's so many isopods in here. I'm gonna lean this up against the side. Oh wow, get a load of those. This Florida Fast is crazy everywhere. Anyway, we're gonna lean it up against the side. We're gonna go along half of this dirt here and we're gonna transfer it over into the new container. Just gonna be grabbing out of the one side here. And as we transfer it over, like I've said in other videos, you wanna kinda of keep the dry side on the dry side. Oops, I kinda of got this backwards here, and the wet side on the wet side. Gotta listen to my own rules here. Or my own uh, teachings. Oh, 
we're just gonna go along to one side and we're gonna transfer over all the soil and whatnot. Stag moss over. And as we scoop up the soil, we're gonna be scooping up isopods as well. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to do this as gently as possible without picking them out too much, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that it's you're getting some isopods over. You don't wanna have them run off the spoon and then fall back into the original container because then we're just gonna be moving over a little bit of isopods, but we wanna kinda of take half of them out of here, transfer half over into the new container. Actually going to take this cuddle bone here and split it in half because the Florida fast don't seem to need the cuddle bone too terribly much. So just a little piece like that should be good for them. Then what I'm going to do, so I'm going to grab some more of this terrarium moss. You can use sphagnum moss as well. I just like the way terrarium moss looks and they do kind of eat it a little bit as well. So I find it has a double purpose. Uh, it does mean that you do have to replace it a little bit more often, but um, other than that, I do like it quite a bit. Now, we're going to take some soil and we're going to fill up the rest of the original container. So that that way, half of the soil is old soil and then we're going to renew and put some new soil in here for the isopods. So that they're not getting all built up with too much grass. And then if I split this culture again, I'm going to be taking from the side that has the old soil on it or the more frassy side. Hopefully, if I can remember. Either way, cut it on down. Maybe get a little bit more moss in here. Grab a new piece of bark. little one here, as you can see. We'll just set it in the center there. I'm gonna grab some leaves. Big bag of dried leaves here. We're gonna be filling up the containers by full of leaves. Like this. On the dry side. And the final thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of this, um, this filtered water um, so that there's all the chlorine and everything taken out of. It's just pure water and I'm just gonna take it and we're gonna spray it on the moss. And the same thing over here. Now you don't want it to be drenched, but since it was dry and this is the first time I'm putting it in here, I do want to make sure that it is quite moist because it is going to take a little bit extra the first time you put the moss in. You can pre-soak the moss, I didn't this time, but it should be okay. The water or the soil that I'm putting in here already has a lot of moisture in it compared to what they're used to. And I did douse down on the moss quite a bit. And even the underside feels quite wet, so it should be good. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other container, and I'll do the same thing with the, the dwarf whites, and then we'll move on to the bigger containers, and I'll show you how we do one of those. Again, look at all those. Look at all the isopods running around. Even in the old container, there's still lots, so that's why we have to transfer these over today.
now we're going to be moving over to my three containers of dwarf whites. Now dwarf whites we have to be extra careful with. Um, same with the Porta Fast. We don't want any um, I suppose possibly contaminating another container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quickly rinse this off with hot water, really steaming hot water or boiling hot water. So that way that if any isopods are on here, uh, they could be in with these small species, they could be hiding in the specks of dirt on here. And we don't want to risk any cross contamination because they could outcompete each other. And that's not something that I want to see happen. All right, now that we got the spoon nice and cleaned off, we can go ahead and start moving over our dwarf whites. Here. So, as you can see here, there is quite a few dwarf whites in these containers. I'll show you another one just for an example of how many we really do have in here. I will take a look here. And we'll see. Oh, kind of hard to see here. Oh, there we go. There's a good example. You can see all the dwarf whites in there. They're just hundreds of them. And you know, as soon as you see dwarf whites on top of anything, that you know that there's too many in the soil and that they're starting to come out of the soil to look for food because there's just so many of them in there. And I've had these for quite some time, so I know it's time to swap them over. So we'll start with this container here. And it'll be the exact same as before. Oh, there's my old spoon. I'm wondering where I put that. Oh, well, we got this one now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another light layer, put it in the bottom, just like before. A couple scoops of dirt here. Spread it all around. That'll be good enough. Take a piece of wood out of here, set it over in the new container, take the leaves out, set that in the new container, Magna moss, same thin, or terrarium moss, whichever you choose. And then we're just going to take big old scoops of ice pods, and dirt, and transfer them on over, just like so. the dwarf whites transferred over there. And again, one more time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some soil and I'm just going to fill up the other half here. Try my best not to touch the soil that's already in the container with this the shovel because they will transfer over into the bin of soil and then that would be the worst because then I'm going to have to get rid of all the soil because it'll be contaminated with dwarf whites and they will they will kill off any other culture that they uh, intermix with. Leaves. Make sure they're not up against the edges so that they don't escape. Another piece of bark in here for them so that they feel safe and then a little bit more terrarium moss. Now this terrarium moss is actually almost done so I'm going to grab my other container for the other ones. Nice and wet. There we go. Now I'm just going to do the same for the other two containers.
Now it's not a big deal that I don't wash the spoon in between uh, these containers because they're all the same species. So the only cross contamination you're gonna get is from the same species and that's not that too bad of a problem. Now as you can see, this container really definitely needs to be swapped over. As you can see, there's way too many dwarf whites that you see on the surface here. And we know that this bin needs to be swapped badly. Down to my last container of dwarf whites here. As you can see, there's some more in here, a little bit of mold outbreak, so I'm gonna be taking that out of there. I'm not gonna put that in the new bin. But there's also quite a few in here, so we're gonna be transferring this bin over as well. And there you go. That's our dwarf wipe all taken care of. Now we can move on to some of the bigger things. All right, guys, don't forget to tune in for uh, next week's uh, for part two of two. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.